Hello and welcome to Cole Red Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Cole Red. Thanks for joining me. Today's video is on shard pulling events. Okay, so we're not going to be talking about the events that necessarily pop up behind this icon over here in the right hand column. Instead, we're going to be talking about the events that specifically light up the portal. You can see we have a couple going on right now. We have a boosted summons uh, announcement here and we have a glowing portal so anytime the portal glows that means we've got a shard event and the color of the portal reflects the highest tier shard that is involved in that event so if you want to know what's going on with these events you need to click on the portal and you come here and you can see right away there are a couple of uh differences we have this events announcement or banner here in the ancient shard tab and it says events too so we have two events going on the first is a guaranteed champion. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And the second is a targeted targeted champion boost. So in order to figure out what that is, we want to click on the icon up here, the I for information. And down at the bottom of this page, we have the champions that are in the event. And these are 10 times chance events. Now, 10 times chance events are common events. They happen every couple of weeks, maybe multiple times uh, during the month. and I want to tell you how they work. So the first thing that you need to know is this doesn't change any of the drop rates of the different shards. So whether you are trying to pull uh, Kandrafon here or you're trying to pull Hefrak, you can pull that uh, those two champions from ancient shards or sacred shards, but at the base rate that is described up here at the top in this chart. So for ancient shards you have a one half chance of pulling a legendary for sacred shards you have a six percent chance of a legendary and those do not change during this event what does change is the way the pool of legendaries is uh manipulated during a successful shard pull so what i mean by that is if you happen to pull a legendary you would typically only have one chance out of about 170 there are 170 different non-void legendaries in the game. So Kandrafon is one of 170 champions that could drop from an ancient shard, could drop from a sacred shard. Same thing with Hefrak. But now, instead of having one chance, Plarium is adding nine additional chances by increasing the pool by nine Kandrafons. So what that means is instead of pulling one Kandrafon out of a pool of 170, you are pulling 10 Kandrafons out of a pool of 179. OK, so what you have here is an increase of chance from one out of 170 to about one in 18. That's a nice increase. One in 18 is still a pretty low chance. But the bigger thing to consider is the fact that whatever shard you're pulling, you still have the lowest chance possible of that shard. What I mean by that is you have the base rate, right? So 0.5 percent chance from an ancient shard, 6 percent chance from a sacred shard. Now, for void shards, the same thing is true, except the pool that you're pulling from is just the void legendaries. So if you're trying to go for ethos here, I think there are about 50 uh, void legendaries in the game. If you successfully pull a void legendary, instead of having a one in 50 chance, you would have a 10 out of 59 chance, so about a one in six chance. Generally speaking, these are bad events for everybody except whales and krakens. If you are willing to spend a lot of money to buy a lot of shards and you want to specifically fill out your roster with a very specific champion, then this is an opportunity for you to do so. But it's not a good time for anybody else to be pulling shards. So if you're a free to play player or a low spender, I highly recommend you completely ignore 10 times chance events unless there is a second reason to pull for these events. OK, so now let's go back to this screen. We can look at the second event, which is the guaranteed champion. Guaranteed champions are sometimes worth pulling for and sometimes not worth pulling for. And you're going to have to make an assessment each and every time there is a guaranteed champion event. Now, a guaranteed champion event can be for a epic like we have here. It can be for a legendary. It could be from any of the three different shard types. So you can have guaranteed champions from ancients or voids or sacreds. The number of shards you'll have to pull will change based on the type of shard it is and the rarity of the reward. So if you are trying to pull for a void legendary, chances are you're going to be pulling a whole lot more than 40 shards. Um, but here we have an epic from ancient shards. This is probably going to be uh, the, the cheapest in terms of resources. You would probably have to pull fewer sacred shards. Sometimes you have to pull like 
18 sacred shards to get a guaranteed legendary or something like that. Um, but sacred shards are so much harder to come by than ancient shards that I would rather pull 40 ancient shards than 18 sacred shards, right? It's just cheaper to, to do the, the ancient shards. So that being said, let's look at this particular fusion and talk about how we can figure out whether or not it is worthwhile to pull for this guaranteed champion. Now, the first thing that you need to know is since this is not a two times event, we are just pulling at our base rate of return. And then we also wanna consider the opportunity cost. Now, opportunity cost, very simply, is what are we losing, what are we giving up in order to make this choice? So what we are giving up is pulling these 40 shards during a two times ancient shard event. And because the drop rates are well documented, we can actually predict with a high degree of accuracy what we're giving up versus what we're getting. So again, we're gonna go over here to this chart. And if we do a quick calculation, if we pull 40 ancient shards, what is our expected return? Well, our expected return is 0.2 legendaries and 3.2 epics. Remember that when you do a two times event, both of these double. So you get a 1% chance of legendary and a 16% chance of an epic. Okay, so if we pull these 40 shards, we expect a return of 3.2 epics plus the bonus epic, so 4.2 epics, and 0.2 legendaries. Now, if we wait until a two times event, all of those returns double except for the guaranteed champion. So we would be looking at 6.4 epics and 0.4 legendaries. I know you can't get fractional champions, so you can't get 0.4 legendaries. You're either gonna get zero or one or two. Um, but over the course of your entire shard pulling career, you know, you will see that these probabilities work themselves out. So what that basically means is whether you're considering all of the shards you ever pull or you're considering the population of all the players who are pulling shards for any given event, the expected return is about the average return per player or for you during your career per event. Meaning if you did this five times, you would expect one legendary to come back. Okay, so what are we giving up? We know our opportunity cost very specifically. We are giving up, we're going from 6.4 epics to 4.2 epics. So we are giving up 2.2 epics and we are going from 0.4 legendary to 0.2 legendary. So the question becomes, is this champion worth 2.2 epics and 0.2 legendaries? Is that how good this champion is? Now, the answer can sometimes be yes. There are certainly epics who are worth more than a fifth of a legendary and more than two other epics who are just kind of random epics, right? So if you're pulling a Geomancer or maybe a Stagnite or a Rector Draft or, you know, some other really good non-void epic, you would definitely say this champion is worth more progress than I would get from just two additional random epics, okay? But in this particular case, I don't think that's true. Wyronin the Silken is an okay epic champion in the Sylvan Watchers faction. And the reason I think that she is in this event is because the Sylvan Watchers faction crypt just launched like last week or the week before. So it's really new and players are scrambling to get their Sylvan Watchers faction crypt teams in order. So she is a decent faction wars champion and we'll look at her kit to see why. Her A1 has a decent chance, 60% uh, chance of placing the large decrease attack for two turns. That's decent. Her A2 fills a turn meter of all allies by 15% and also places a 30% increase speed buff on all allies for two turns. That's solid. And then she has a revive on her A3, which is always nice for faction crypts, revives one dead ally with 50% HP and 30% turn meter, and then places a continuous heal buff on that ally for two turns. So at face value, she looks okay, but once you start looking at her skills specifically, you'll see she's actually on the weaker side. First of all, if we take this revive, she revives one dead ally on a four turn cooldown, and it's not a strong revive. It's kind of a mediocre revive. In this faction, in Silver Watch, Watcher's faction, there is Tree Shield Knot. He is a rare, he's a void rare you can get in this faction, and he actually has a better kit, and he has a two person revive on a five turn cooldown. And it's pretty close in terms of stats. It's about a 45% HP and 25% turn meter um, on a five turn cooldown. So these two revives are fairly similar, 
Um, I may even argue that the two ally revive is a little bit better, even though it's a weaker stat wise. Um, and that's because tree shield knot is a rare. And so it's just easier to build a rare out um, and get them geared up and get booked out. At least is a lot easier when they're rares than when they're epics. And then you also have this A2. Now, this A2 fills the term meter of allies by 15% and places that increased speed buff. This is the same exact skill that both High Katoon and Apothecary place. However, both of those champions do it on a three turn cooldown, and Wyronin does it on a four turn cooldown. So while she has good skills, those skills are fairly, like the version of these skills is fairly weak. The cooldowns are fairly weak. Um, the execution of the skills is fairly weak. So I would say she's at best an average champion. And therefore, if I'm just living in a vacuum, I would say not worth the 40 shards, definitely not worth the 2.2 epics we're giving away and the fifth of a legendary we're giving away. She's not that strong. And I would pass on her unless you are very desperate for a champion in the Sylvan Watching watchers faction okay so let's talk about other events uh some that aren't going on right now that we could consider one is a fusion event now we don't have a fusion event going on right now but there is one starting next week and you will have two different events usually during a fusion event or a fragment event uh which is you'll have a summon rush and you'll have a champion chase now a champion chase just requires you to collect champions you get points for doing so and then you'll either get the fragment or the fusion champion that you need from collecting enough points. Typically, you will have to pull some shards during this event to get enough points. The other one is a summon rush, and a summon rush just gives you points based on the type of shard that you pull. During these events, it is acceptable and even desirable to pull sacred shards or ancient shards to get enough points to collect the rewards you need for the fusion or fragment legendary that the the whole event the big event is about so if it is a good fusion go ahead and invest those shards during those two events and just think of those as a guaranteed champion event right a fusion is a guaranteed champion event if you can complete all the tasks you're guaranteed potentially a very very good fusion the last fusion that we just did was newt from the dwarven faction he is an amazing S tier level legendary, and he is worth the shard investment for the summon rush and the champion chase. Not every fusion is worth that. One other thing to consider is when you do use those shards, you also get the rewards from those shards. So even though you're pulling specifically to get the points for the fusion, you may also get additional legendary or epic champions that can help your account. So that is definitely something that is worth uh, investing in i would typically say for the average player you're not going to do a fusion for the first say four to six months of your account but starting around six months you should consistently be able to do at least every other fusion or maybe every third fusion so you know starting at the six month point i would say you're looking at at least three to four fusions a year if not five or six okay that requires that you save up those shards for those events and that's something to consider there is also an extra legendary event that sometimes happen. So it looks kind of like the guaranteed champion event. But what happens is if you successfully pull a legendary at the base rate, you will get a second different legendary for free. OK, now this is actually an OK time to pull shards for some players. The best situation is if you know that you are close to mercy, if you are close to mercy on ancient shards or sacred shards, whichever the event is um, requiring, then you could say, okay, I know I'm going to hit relatively soon. So if you have just pulled uh, a legendary from an ancient shard, then you know that the mercy system requires you to pull basically 200 summons without a legendary before the mercy system kicks in. This is also true for void shards. So if you just pulled a legendary recently and you have to pull 150 or 200 shards before you get to the uh the mercy system then i would say the extra legendary is not really for you if you are a free to play or low spender um however if you are say plus 150 maybe you're at 160 180 you're 195 then that's a good opportunity for you to pull because you know you're going to get a legendary within say 50 pulls and that means you're going to get two legendaries within 50 pulls 
and that is a lot better return on investment um, than even a two times event. Okay. So if you're close to mercy, extra legendaries are great events. And then you have the two times events. What I would say is for the first year of a new account, the two times events are probably the best events in the game for you, with the exception maybe of really good fusion events. Okay. So your ancient shards, your voice shards, and your sacred shards. During that first year, you primarily want to pull during your two times events. That just doubles your chances of getting legendaries, and it also doubles your chance of getting good epics, and that's really important, especially for void shards. For the entirety of your raid career, if you are a free-to-play player, do not pull void shards for any other reason except a two-time event, or... If you're just super lucky and you get a ton of really good void legendary champions and then you're like, you know, I can just throw these shards away because I like it, then fine. Play the way you want. You should enjoy the game. But I highly recommend every free to play player and low spender never pull void shards for any reason except two times void shard events. And to just hammer this home, I want to show you my roster. So I've been playing this game for about 25 or 26 months. And I'm going to show you my entire roster here based on rarity. Okay, now I've pulled all of my void. I'm sorry, I pulled all of my legendaries out of the vault. So this is literally every single legendary I own, and I have never fed one, so it's every legendary I have ever owned. Each row is 10 champions, and you can see I have 71 legendaries. Okay, now some of those legendaries came from fusions, some of them came from guaranteed uh, events. Some of them came from rewards in game, whether login rewards or uh, mission rewards like Arbiter and Mithrala and Lydia. So if we look at these 71 champions, I've pulled roughly 55 of those champions from shards. Three of those 55 are void legendaries. I have Cardiel, I have Allele, and then down here I have Little Miss Annie. Now, Cardiel is an amazing champion. I pulled him about four months into my account, and he was the reason I fell in love with Raid. He's an amazing champion. And if you pull Void Shards, you may never, ever see a Cardiel. But there's a decent chance that somewhere along the line, you're going to pull a Void Legendary who changes your account. Okay? And that's the goal. That's the hope that by pulling during two times events, you give yourself more chances. But realize here, I have pulled three Void Legendaries in two plus years of playing, whereas I have pulled 50 plus non-void legendaries from shards. So some of those came from sacred shards, some of them came from ancient shards, but they all came from shards. That means I'm, I'm getting non-void legendaries at a rate of about 17 or 18 to one to void legendaries, okay? 18 times more non-void legendaries than void legendaries. So if you think about it this way, if you pulled a thousand void shards during just regular rates, you would get five void legendaries. If you pulled during two times events, you would get 10 legendaries. So what that means is, and say it might take you four years to pull a thousand void shards, but in those four years, you would literally pull five more void legendaries than you would otherwise. So two Void Legendaries a year, or two and a half Void Legendaries a year, is a lot better than one Legendary a year, right? So I know I've been hammering on this a lot, but definitely this is one of the things that I never see content creators talk about. Um, you know, a lot of them will say, hey, I'm going to pull, but you shouldn't pull. Or, you know, they're like, hey, Voids are, you know, I'm going to pull some Voids here during a fusion because there are a lot more points than Ancient Shards. But I am a free-to-play player. I have always been a free-to-play player. and I am. I swear, I am telling you the absolute truth when I say I will never pull during any other event than a two times void chart event. Um, I have done it one time and I don't necessarily regret it, but I do kind of lament those 30 lost shards. And I did that for Mithrala. I'm sorry, not for Mithrala. I did that for Demitha. Now, Demitha is an amazingly strong um void epic who enables unkillable comps in clan boss and does other cool things but the reason i personally pulled her is because she was part of a fusion event or a fragment event and i got 95 fragments out of 100 for demitha 
and I messed up on the last day and I didn't get all 100 fragments. And then I had to look at her in my portal, in my fragment um, summons portal. You can see she's down here, 95. I had to look at that for a year and a half without successfully pulling her from a void shard. So there was an opportunity a few months ago to get her as a guaranteed champion, and I took it just for my personal mental health to be over it. OK, but that's the only time I've ever pulled during a um, non two times void event. And that's why I have three void legendaries instead of one or two. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. Also, let me know if you disagree or if you agree and it's born fruit in some way. Remember that anecdotal evidence is a little bit, you know, you got to be wary of that. Remember, there are hundreds of thousands of players playing Raid Shadow Legends. So if you hear a story about a guy who YOLO'd one void shard during a non two times event and he pulled Krisk or a Krizia, that will happen in a population this large. But just because he got a good result doesn't mean it was a good decision, right? The more good decisions we make, the more good results we're going to get in the long run. And that's what this video has been trying to show. So I hope that I've convinced you. Definitely, again, like I said, let me know in the comments below if I have or if I haven't. I've been Colred. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you all in another video soon.